Hello, I'm broadcasting legend Rick Mercer. You're listening to The Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. Some of the material you hear on this program may not be suitable for everyone, like you, in the car with your kids in the back seat. Please do not blame DBS if your kids go to school and they start calling their friends and wallets. Listen with discretion. Thank you. Adwa in uh, today. Good morning, Adwa. Good morning. And nice to see you. Derek's here too. Um, really? Was it humid in the city? Was it was it real humid? Oh. Was it it was a stinker? I don't have the air conditioning. What are you talking about? When are you going to get air conditioning? I might get it today. Really? I might get one of those little standalone units. <laughs> Here's a um, holy crap. <laughs> here is a little known fact. Derek was the last person in Canada to get cable this year. I, uh, are you kidding? Totally not. No cable. No, he's the second last person in Canada to get <laughs> air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not one of those early adopters, one like you people. <laughs> air conditioning is about 100 years old. <laughs> I'm still not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> you have it, though, right? You got to have air conditioning. Adjo, you have air conditioning? Of course, central. Uh, see, she's got central. Throughout the whole house, come on. Gotta have it. Yeah, you can beta get a tester. You can get an air conditioner for four hundred dollars, man. <laughs> you totally can. To heat your whole or cool your whole home, that's like an Argo season ticket, man. Wow, <laughs> wow. Priorities. That's two. <laughs> that's two Argo season tickets. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might go get one. Yeah, you? you should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, busy day today. We're going to chat a little bit about uh, this Zimmerman dude in the trial, and he is screwed, Just hey? Nuts. He's pooched. Nuts. This guy's never going to be able to go no. get a Slurpee ever. <laughs> That's all I was thinking this morning. Yeah, that guy can't even get a Slurpee. He yeah, did. I guess he's off the Neighborhood Watch program now. I guess. Yeah, yeah he's he not is. Allowed. Yeah, no. No vigilante justice room. No, we'll talk about that later on today. That's a good one. Corey Monteith is dead from the, the TV show Glee. Woke up to that yesterday. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know <laughs> that was. Why well, you didn't I know? Knew he was, no, I didn't. I knew he was. I heard he was Canadian. I went, oh, and yeah. Then, uh, he's on Glee. I'm like, oh, was he the music teacher? He's the no, <laughs> no. That's that's a woman. He was oh. the what the the woman? No, it's a dude's the music, dude's teacher. The music teacher. No, it's a woman. No, it's a guy. No, the it was. Oh, I'm thinking about the gym teacher. Lynch. Yes, yeah. Jane Lynch. Sorry. Get it together. Sorry, Get I don't your watch. Glee I don't watch that show. Together. Yeah, he. Di- I, I knew who he was because he was doing, uh, well, sorry, excuse me, that's disrespectful. He was with, he was dating Leah Michelle. Yes. And oh. I know who she is because she's got a great body. Yeah. So I associated, I'm like, oh, the chick with the great body, her boyfriend's dead. From Calgary. Yeah, no, Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Still doesn't nothing. go? No. no. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about why and some other stuff also. Um Sad, not not even sad, very uh, unfortunate. And I don't even know if it's supposed to be funny, the names for that Asiana <laughs> Airline thing. No. Is that so, that are we allowed prank. to laugh at that? It's a prank. <laughs> but are we allowed to laugh at that prank? I mean, the people I, the people aren't dead. No, they're whose not. Whose names they were using, the people no. don't even exist, but it's a play on Korean I think it's, words. I think, it, <laughs> I think it's funny. I'll take the, I'll take the heat for this. Will you? Yeah. I thought it was humorous. Because it was on TV, not because of the names. <laughs> well, I, I, was, I thought it was more humorous and not to give too much away, but that I'm sure that it had to get to a few people before it got to the newsreader. Well, they said a summer intern at the NTSB okayed the names. Ooh. Oh, not good. Which makes it even funnier. <laughs> not good. It makes it even funnier. When, well, I don't even know if it's supposed to be funny. When they were reading the pilot's name during the new, noon broadcast, <laughs> and one of the names was We Too Low. We Too Low. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk about it. I, I just Derek thinks it's funny. Derek, well, I I don't know anymore. Uh, I'll I, take, I, like I say, I'll take I mean, when I watched one. when I watched the news story of them doing that news story yeah. and screwing it up live, I I I have to say I did laugh because I thought, oh, someone's gonna get fired. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> this, this is is. is. On 102.1 The Edge. This is your 
Edge. Damn it. Hold it. Files <laughs> with Dean Blundell <laughs> on the edge. <laughs> Uh, former lawyer is suing Apple, claiming the computer company uh, uh, sold devices that allowed him to access free porn on the internet and erect his marriage. Mm. Yeah, Aww. from the book of this guy's a huge dick. <laughs> um, in the 50-page complaint, Chris Sevier of Tennessee said he tried to visit Facebook.com, accidentally typed uh, fbook.com on the adult website appealed to his biological sensibilities as a male and led him to unwanted porn addiction with adverse consequences. I, on a related note, apparently there's fbook.com. I didn't know that. <laughs> and note to self. <laughs> Why doesn't he just try and sue electricity? I don't know. That's great. Because he's, he's, he's just that dumb, that's yeah. why. Uh, he also claims Apple enabled unfair competition between porn stars and his wife. <laughs> Explaining right. the plaintiff began desiring younger, more beautiful girls in porn than his wife, who is no longer 21. Uh, so far, there's been zero response from Apple or the porn industry. I bet you because Apple's going to file this with their uh, in like that 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 huge file they have full of complete and total rejects. <laughs> hey, get a load of this file. <laughs> this guy's suing us because yeah. his wife's gross. I was scuba diving with my iPod and it stopped working. <laughs> that See you work. in court. <laughs> uh, guy in Turkey so desperate to quit smoking, he wore a cage on his head. It's a little intense. Okay. Um, one of those, uh, you know, those uh, varmint cages you can use to catch, like, uh, you know, squirrels and crap like that? Yeah. Sure. He cut holes in it and put it over his head and then gave the chain and the key to his wife so he doesn't smoke cigarettes at work. He's able to breathe and see, but he can't get his hands anywhere near his head. He's also able to eat crackers and sip water through wires and straws. Uh, it so worked. extreme. <laughs> Two weeks later, he is smoke free and he took the cage off, said he's never felt better. So he's going to try and patent it for people. <laughs> Nobody wants it. Nobody's going to do it. People have some weird problem solving ideas. Yeah, they these don't days. they? Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. Should have wore that for the last 13 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> wore it around your waist. <laughs> just, a, just a chastity belt right there. <laughs> so nice. And a woman in Jackson, Tennessee filed a complaint against her doctor after he gave her what could be called, some would call a racist or inappropriate and insulting diagnosis. Hmm. Adjua, maybe you can help with this. Uh, Dr. Terry Ragland, or sorry, a girl named Terry Ragland went to see Dr. Sweo for her back pain <laughs> and was shocked by his diagnosis. Uh, apparent, well, why don't I just play the audio for you? This is what she said. I don't know. I don't know what ghetto booty is, but apparently she, that's what that's what her diagnosis was. Have a listen. And he said, uh, I know what the problem is, uh, is um, ghetto booty. And I said, ghetto what? He said, get a booty. He said, well, there's no cure for it, but I could probably give you something if you're having pain. <laughs> Another one on F book. <laughs> <laughs> What's ghetto booty? What is it? What is ghetto it? What is booty a ghetto booty? Is basically your your butt, your buttocks are yeah. basically on your back. The talks. What yes. do you mean? What do you mean butt on your back? I don't know. Your your work. your butt is not low. It's riding high. Oh, it's a high rise. It's really? a high rise and butt. Yeah. Sure. It's a ghetto booty song we found. <laughs> this is the message left on her answering machine by the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. You got. <laughs> Have a listen to this song. This will explain everything. <laughs> you found this new booty. What do you mean? It's on the back. Like it sits on the back. Basically, it's a, it's a high. It's is a it high one butt. of those ones that goes like this? Yes. It's like like an at apple some point, bottom. it comes it's up. An apple bottom butt. Like half a heart. Go yes, ahead, basically, sideways. yeah. That's why they need apple bottom jeans. I don't mind those. Yeah. Like Rihanna, she would have. Ah, uh, no, no, not so much. More like Beyonce. J Lo. <laughs> so a lot of junk in the trunk. <laughs> this song's ridiculous. <laughs> Gets the girls going though. Does it really? It does. Is it a good dance tune? Sure is. A little pumping. What are they? What are they? Uh, what are they singing about? Uh, just how he likes the, the behind. It's like booty, 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 rocking everywhere. <laughs> he found this new booty. That is so dumb. 
Bring it back to me. You know you're bopping your head. Come on. No, I'm not. Do it. That's the stupidest song I ever heard. Just touch it. Touch it. Touch one. <laughs> Miss New Booty. That's who this is? This is Miss yes. New Booty. That's the name of the song? Yes. Hey, how funny is it that doctor told the chick she had uh, ghetto booty? That was her diagnosis. So. And he had the cure. Yeah, it's a real thing. A couple Tylenol. <laughs> he can take away the pain, but he can't cure the ghetto booty. He can ease that pain. <laughs> Dear Edge Files, whatever the hell day it is in uh, July of the year 2013. The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. Okay, here you go. So So the story is George, neighborhood watch guy, Trayvon Martin, some dude coming home from 7-Eleven with Skittles and um, iced tea, and then uh, they get in a a skirmish, and uh, George takes out a gun, shoots his kid, 17, right in the chest. He's dead. People freak out. 40 days later, he gets charged with second-degree murder. They do the whole trial. Not guilty because the evidence was overwhelming, uh, apparently, according to them, Mm -hmm. overwhelming that, indeed, he didn't... uh, he didn't racially profile the kid. Well, they were saying it was because the such circumstantial evidence, it wasn't enough evidence to prove that he did it. Yeah. Beyond a reasonable doubt. So that's why they convicted him not guilty. So now I was watching it and I remember saying to uh, someone, yeah, he's going to be found not guilty, number one. Number two, when that happens, all hell is going to break loose. Maybe not like the Rodney King no. thing, but watching it happen, like watching people take to the streets, and and you know what you know what really uh, helps a not not guilty verdict is lighting people's cars on fire <laughs> yeah. in Oakland and American flags. Yeah, let's light the California <laughs> flag on flag fire. on fire. Yeah. Maybe a few cars. <laughs> let's walk Torch around uh, downtown New York and mm-hmm. uh, and get a whole bunch of signs because yeah. that'll fix it. Um, and you know the only two people that really know what happened, obviously, are this uh, this George Zimmerman guy and and this this poor kid. And then that, that the focus of it is, of course, that that's the saddest part. Yeah, is that this kid's dead, no matter what happened, mm-hmm. right? And even the, I think the parents are saying his parents are like, "Hey, everybody, chill out." Yeah, there's nothing you can do. That's what the jury decided. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Here's some uh, audio of some of the people protesting, and this is all over. This is called the after the acquittal rage. <laughs> this no is justice! it. No justice. No peace. No justice. People got to get new lines too. You should no. hear the the, the the one they're chanting. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's coming like, up. Yeah. No peace. No justice. No peace. I'm waiting for hell. No, we won't go. That didn't last. <laughs> What are they saying there? Whose street? Our street. Our street. Okay. You gotta understand. We gotta speak up now. Now. Race was the question. If you reverse the race to the perpetrator and the victim, it, the outcome would not have been the same. Oh, back to the old no justice, yes. no peace yeah. thing. Yes. <clears throat> you know, you watch it too, and you, you can't help but wonder. It, it, well, I do anyway. I can't help but wonder if he if he was found guilty, would would uh, there would be reverse protests? Probably, you know from, what I mean? probably from Ann Coulter, but that's probably about it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. She likes white people, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. A lot. Then there's this one. This one kind of made me laugh, and I don't mean to take the piss out of it, but uh, this, this lady had some Skittles. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. We're not guilty. Well, I got Skittles. I got a tea. So everybody better watch out. I'm I got Skittles. I got a tea. Why do we do you stand up? She's got Skittles in a T. Everybody she better watch, watch out. out. He's, dangerous. He's a criminal. Because that was the thing, right? Like this this kid was walking through this uh, yard and he had Skittles and a nice tea in his hand. He just came back from the 7 Eleven. Mm-hmm. Did he have, um, I'm pretty sure he had an, uh, like a, a rap sheet, if you will. I'm pretty sure he had previous convictions for stuff. Uh, no. Pr- no. No? Nothing? No, he didn't. No. He didn't? No. I'm pretty sure Did he did. Did Zimmerman? Zimmerman had something. I think so. No, he didn't. I think so. No. 
You didn't read any. I know <laughs> you. Oh You're starting to make stuff up go. again. Yeah. Are you making not, things no, up again? No. Yeah, you are. No. I'm not making anything up. <laughs> look it up. Uh, Sean, Sean, you look it up. Let me know if uh, Trayvon had a had any criminal, criminal charges or, uh, or Zimmerman. I don't think Zimmerman did. Even if Trayvon did, it wouldn't show up because he's a minor. So his records would be sealed. They wouldn't show the records. No, but they would say whether or not he would have a criminal record. If he was known they would say, or like that. they wouldn't say whether or not he, what he did. Mm, oh, not sure about that. Not sure about on. that. Are you serious? Yes, I am. Yes, and George Zimmerman <laughs> had a ties to Al Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did with this chicken oh, yeah. Skittles. He's not guilty. Well, I got Skittles. I got a tea. So everybody better watch out because I'm coming. I got Skittles. You know what? Here's the thing, too. I was thinking about is that guy, and I said it earlier, mm. he, he won't even be able to go to the store to get no any way. cough no. medicine. No. God forbid he gets a headache and he runs out of ibuprofen because he can't go to the Walgreens <laughs> and get some. <laughs> but he gained like a good 300 pounds. Did you see that? He yeah. is a moose. <laughs> He's a moose. That was the funny part of the trial was <laughs> they, they showed videos of him because I watched it all the time. Sean, what do you got? Uh, it just says he was a bit of a S disturber at school. He was suspended three times for drugs, truancy, graffiti, burglary. A burglary oh. I would count as a criminal. But anyway. But no, he was never charged with anything. It doesn't say that here. Yeah, no. Zimmerman? Nothing? Nothing about Zimmerman, mm. no. Anyway, mm. my point was, uh, to, to further yours, Adra, you're right, he was an angel. Um, <laughs> Did I say I never said he was an angel? So, anyway, my point was is that, yeah, the, the Zimmerman thing where they showed him like, uh, while he was going through the trial, or like when when the whole thing happened, it was like a year and a half yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. So he was on the fast track. I don't know if he was on the Elvis diet, <laughs> but he, he was like so thin he when he was... when he when they showed him with the bloody nose yeah. and the teeth knocked out and all the other marks on his face. I'm like, mm. oh, it's a skinny guy got beat up. Yeah. And then they showed him in court, and you're like, oh, someone <laughs> ate him. <laughs> he ate someone. <laughs> It did. It looks like someone ate the guy. He he's, looks like he massive. looks like a bl- oh huge. He had to have gained hundred pounds. <laughs> well, he was on house arrest. Couldn't leave his house. Yeah, so he was just ordering Not KFC a- buckets. Is that what he was yeah, doing? I think so. <laughs> a lot of chicken. <laughs> he was on the Ford oh, Z man, diet. That is no. That is. <laughs> uh, there's more than just chicken in that guy's diet. It's ice cream and it's everything. It's it, just large. Yeah. Forget the. He's food. probably eating sugar cubes, <laughs> chocolate covered sugar cubes. Those were the snacks. 840, sorry, 644. <laughs> but yeah, he's not going to be able to go to the store anymore. No. That would suck. I know. His life is gone. He even said it. Did he? In his post They gave his gun. They gave him his gun back, too. Yeah. Well, they have to. They gave him his gun back, and it was just a crazy story. And you know, it's funny. I've, I've got uh, satellite radio, so I, I listened yeah. to the Zimmerman trial like for the last week and a half. Mm-hmm. And... Some of the like when you when you hear the some of the things like he he was crying for help or the Trayvon guy crying for help and this guy was gonna go to jail for like the rest of his life yeah and then they talked about the alternative and where he said he was worried in both cases he was worried that he was gonna go to jail and worried that he was gonna get off because he was af- more afraid of what was out there than what was inside he there- has virtually no life now he has none. They're even saying that the Trayvon team, like the, the lawyers and stuff, are all going to have to go underground for a while, too, because there's death threats on that side, too. Really? Is it really? Yeah. Because they feel like they guess Because of the color won. of people's skin. Yeah. That's what it comes That's down to, it isn't it? Well, in a crazy law in Florida, stand your ground, because if it was any other state, he would yeah. have gone to jail. Yeah, stand your ground. That law says basically you can do whatever to yes. somebody if they start pushing you around. Mm-hmm. Like, if you walk up to me and gave me a purple nurple, I could shoot you in yes. the face with a gun. Say you attacked me with that purple nurple. Hardcore. Camp must be terrible down there. The Dean Blundell Show. On 102.1. Yeah. This one's from uh, Cody. Hey, I'm not sure if you've seen this video on the crash in San Francisco. Apparently, they called the NTSB National Transportation Transportation Safety Board or Bureau. I don't know. One of the two. Mm. And they confirmed the names that this girl said live on uh, on a TV station called KTVU. So they were doing a story on the pilots' names on this Asiana or Asiana Airlines that crashed. Miracle that only three people have died. And they are in deep crap. Now the airline is suing them. 
the the uh, the TV station, but they're not suing the NTSB. So here's the story: the airline, the the TV station apparently called NTSB and said, "Are these the names of the pilots?" Some summer intern with a sense of humor said, <laughs> "Yep, sounds good to me." <laughs> <laughs> In the plane crash, KTV has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We Tu Lo, Ho Li Fook, and no, no. Bang Ding Ao. And the NTSB <laughs> has confirmed are the names of the pilots on board flight 214 when it crashed. No. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing on Saturday. Well, no, well, 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 oh, well, 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 well. Mm. So when I listen to that, and I want to, I like I want to, I want to find it humorous, but I don't know if I'm allowed. I do. Yeah, I think you're allowed because it's just a play on words, yeah, you, right? You know, you're just reporting on another news story. It's all good. Also on the plane crash, KTV has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are. Ca- <laughs> <laughs> Our captain, Sum Ting Wong. We to low, ho li fook, and bang ding ow. Now, bang ding ow. Bang ding ow. <laughs> bang ding ow. Yeah. Very disrespectful. It's like the mm. 1950s. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Of the four pilots who were on board the flight, they are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We to Lo, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ao. The NTSB has confirmed. This is my favorite part. It's not even the names. It's the seriousness with, with, with yes. It said it, this. This got past every single person, from the editor of the actual TV station to the person writing it, to the anchor, to the whoever approves the story, to the guy phoning the NTSB, to someone writing this down on a piece of paper, then to a teleprompter on a whole bunch of computers, and it still got read on the radio. And that is the most amazing part of this story. Like it got past everybody. And then after she says it, the the logistical story behind, like, like how she continues to be very so serious about the whole thing. Have a listen. TSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board Flight 214 when it crashed. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing on Saturday. Well, I'm, also, I'm, I'm um, betting Bang Ding Ao was the first problem there. 100%. Can you believe that got through everybody? I can't. Like on television, in one of the biggest, it's the second biggest TV market in the world, and one of the biggest television stations in the world, and nobody caught it. They wanted to be the first. She really is just a news reader. Yeah, she's like Will Ferrell from Anchorman. Yeah, a question mark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it, did I tell you, whatever you put on the teleprompter, Ron reads. <laughs> So now the the airline is suing the TV station, but not the NTSB, saying the airline, uh, it caused them their reputation damage. I don't know if they've seen that giant plane on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it missed the least of their with all With all the burn marks in it yeah. and the tail that's missing. Yeah, your reputation's but ruined. But that, I mean, you know, it's not like the TV station helped or hurt. But I can't decide if this is supposed to be like I like I I know privately how I would feel about this. Yes. Professionally, I'm not sure. Mm. It's funny. Is it? Mm, yeah, a little bit. On the plane crash, KTV has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We Tu Lo, Ho Li Fook, mm. and Bang Ding Ao. The NTSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board Flight 214 when it crashed. Mm. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing on Saturday. Well, uh, I sure yeah. hope they get that sorted out. You know, the, the, the only way that would be better is if is if uh, it was if it was captained by Ivan Joiderpuss. It is co Haywood Jablomi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were both sitting in the tail. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Joiterpuss. Ivan? Captain Ivan Joiterpuss. He was behind the controls big time. Total loser. <laughs> 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 
and Howie Felder Snatch. <laughs> mm, always good. First mate Felder Snatch. First name Howie. <laughs> Bored, lonely, hard up. Use your free hand and follow the boys on Twitter. At D. Blundell Show. The Dean Blundell Show. 102.1. The Edge. Lots went on this weekend. We talked about Zimmerman. We talked about uh, the, the Asiana Airlines flight screw up with the pilot names recently. Corey Monteith died over the weekend as well from the TV show Glee. Oh. No. Yeah. yeah Not yeah. a clue. Yeah, you had no idea who it was. I, no. <laughs> I had a next door neighbor name. The last name was Monteith. That's as close as it gets. For yeah, me. I knew a girl with a terrible looking girl in high school named Marsha Monteith. Not good looking She put all. the teeth back in Monteith. I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah. How oh, terribly oh, ironic. Awful. Yeah. Anyway, no, 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 so so this dude died, apparently been struggling. Uh, sad story, really, struggling with alcohol and drug addiction since he was 13. Was it the coke he was on? Was he on yeah, the cocaine? He was, he was on the cocaine. The booger sugar? Yeah. That's what he did? Mm. Uh, and he's been to rehab a whole bunch of times since he was 13. I guess he did, and I just found this out yesterday because I was trying to find out who he was as well. I knew who he was, like I said, because I knew he was uh, with this uh, chick with a really great body from the TV show. Oh, Named uh, Leah Michelle. Michelle. He was dating her. Yeah, his they were they, they yeah. were together. Yeah. So she's probably really upset today. Probably singing a sad song. <laughs> yeah. Today. Very sad. Yeah. Feel mm-hmm. sorry for. Her. Yeah. So they had him come from. From what I understand is this: he's in Vancouver. Was there since the sixth. So he's been there for nine days. Well, was there for nine days. Checks into his hotel at like uh, in the wee hours of the morning on, was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday night into Sunday. Checks into his hotel on the uh, very early in the morning. And then um, he, he was with people earlier in the day. Checks in early in the morning. Uh, he doesn't check out by noon. Cleaning staff go in. Boom, he'd been dead for a while. They did, they, the paramedics even try to resuscitate him because he'd been dead for yeah. that long. So two things. Uh, Vancouver's known for lots of heroin. Yes. And tons of hipsters. And I guarantee <laughs> it he didn't get killed by a hipster. <laughs> you never know. He may have. He got snapped to death. <laughs> <laughs> he got cooled to death. <laughs> the irony killed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the emo was just too much. So anyway, he um, apparently, by all accounts, really nice guy. Yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. And you'd never, and, and so you, I'm watching him on TV the other day, and he's uh, walking down the red carpet because they're talking about how great a guy he was and stuff. And good looking dude. Really good looking dude. What on earth would he have to be sad about? That's what I would think. Well, how could someone be that sad it's about demons. life? Demons. I guess when you've been doing drugs for 17 Since out of 30 you were 13, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got issues. I wonder what it was. Maybe it was, uh, could be. Oh. We can't say Hooray. that. Hooray. For Christ's sake. <laughs> I am fact-based. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't be that fact-based yeah. anymore. Let's be an entertainment-based show. Conscious cho- this, is, uh, this is him on that uh, TV show, Strombo. Are you making conscious choices now in your art to separate your character, f- your characters from the guy that is in Glee? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I just want to show people, you know, whatever range. It's very separate now. I can show them. <laughs> and I, I feel like I, I've lived a league of lives, you know. And um, done so many things and seen so many things. And, and I just, I want to do as much as I can. I want to push myself as far into as many characters as I can and do as many things as I can. This is a challenge, you know? I mean, that's what, it's fun. Hmm. It's weird hearing dead people talk, you know that? It is. It is. After they die? It's very weird. Because you know. You're that article again. that you wrote, I remember you told me that you had done an interview mm-hmm. and that you weren't sure what was going to happen when it came out. And then I read the interview <laughs> that came out, and you just unloaded, man. Yeah. It was as if you were telling everybody all the stuff that you had done in your youth. Yeah. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. Criminal stuff. Criminal stuff. Uh, and I was like, well, why? my first thought was, did, why, why? Was somebody going to blackmail you? Why would you tell all everybody this? Well, what happened? I mean, there's, there's a couple different ways to look at it. Like, I always felt as if I was... People have always made a lot of assumptions. You know, you look, you see this this uh, young all-American quarterback-looking dude on the show, and you just immediately make assumptions. And I think people started really identifying me with those assumptions, which is uh, the media, and I understand that. But at the same time, I felt like I had to step in at some point and relate to people my experience and re- relate to people the truth of, you know, my life and where I come from. And, and other kids can see. That's the other thing, is... is you know, if I can, through my experience, shed light on the way out 
of a difficult situation that I'm, I know many kids are experiencing. You know, just like I did when I was a teenager. I mean, it's that's that's huge. Yeah. Well, maybe don't listen to that one after yeah, yeah, the, no. the weekend. Yeah. No, no. Sad, eh? Like you, can, you know, that's the thing about addiction and stuff like that. Is, is, is you can go on this spree where you're telling everybody you could be an example. You could t- hear, hear, and he was very honest about his addiction and yeah. stuff like that. But you know, it doesn't end well. No, no. Sad stuff. He was a studly looking. He dude was. Too. He was only thirty one. Yeah, young. Young. Any bets? Coke. Yeah. I say heroin. I think it was Coke. What was it for Heath Ledger? Um, it's like it was a pills. whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. It was like pills and Cocktail. booze. Ah, uh, this is probably just coke. You think yeah. so? Yeah, it's yeah. probably probably just an overdose. Yeah. I don't know. Wrong cocktail. Maybe it was coke and heroin mixed in together. Yeah. What do they call that Nazi crank? Yes, I think so. I think they do. Yeah. Anyway, you guys stuff. know so much about drugs. Well, about drugs and him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know anything about no. both. Yeah. <laughs> He had to look it up. <laughs> <yesterday>. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that guy? Uh, anyway, sad stuff. This is the Dean Bundell Show. <laughs> Last week, uh, Nicole, our call screener, introduced me to this app. Everybody's got an app for stuff now. You got, they even have apps that track your period, ladies. Oh, well, they do. Well, for guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do they really? no. Why is this alarm cue going off in my Smurf? Oh, oh don't, don't go home for four days. Sometimes That's five. what it'll tell you. It'll give it some time. <laughs> so anyway, there's this app called Swipe, and I, I, I just found out about it because Nicole uh, had it on her phone, and, and she showed it to me and went on. You went on a swipe date, didn't you? You actually went on one. Yeah. Yeah. So she goes on this swipe date. Mm-hmm. Um, well, why don't you come over and, and, and talk about it briefly? Um, but she goes on this swipe date and, and, and informs me that what happens is you, you get this app and then, and shows it to me and you can, it's like kind of, am I hot or not? You can go through the, the phone, the, the, the pictures and the yeah. profile by, by just swiping it with your finger. And then yeah, once you land on something, you think you want to tap. If you want to tap that ass, all you do, <laughs> all you do is, is click on the right at the uh, right at the bottom. It says, uh, accept yeah. or whatever it is, accept. And then, and then boom, you guys hook up through email. Is that how that works? Then? No. Well, what you do is you you're swiping through pictures. So I've already established. So that. one way is deny, the other way is is pass oh, so or like, or you send them like a like, right? Yeah. So that sends them a little notification saying, "Hey, on their app? on their app, yeah, saying, hey, so and so thinks you're cute. You know, do you want to send them a message back or do you want to keep going?" And just like pass. What do you mean, them? send them a message back? Oh. So if you can, let, let, let me ask you. Uh, get, let's get this straight. Oh, address pretending like she doesn't know anything oh. about it. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I've never this put on this one. This is on your idea. telephone. <laughs> what is it like a rotary dialer? <laughs> <laughs> is it like a telegram? So <laughs> like, like a gift card. <laughs> so uh, if you swipe, and then basically when you land on something you like, you can contact that person through the app, and it says to them. Hey, listen, someone swiped you, wants to get together tonight. They're in this area. Do you want to hit them back? So then they check you out and then it's game on. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, they they have to like you back through the app for you to be able to talk to each other. So you can't just get random creepers being like, let's do this. Let's do this and like send you weird messages. So you have to both connect with each other. I think you're all random creepers, to be honest. (laughs) Yeah. I think the second you download it. Yeah. It's not that You're bad. You're a random creep. It did you do you still have the app? No, I got rid there of it. There you go. It can't be that great. <laughs> well, I just I, I'm not Why did you get rid of it? Cuz I don't I didn't want it anymore. Pressure oh, from this no. room. <laughs> <laughs> do you know why you got rid of it? Cuz you realized it was loserific and it was almost too late, wasn't it? Like was, you realized I that an app like that it. is for people who have no life, no friends, <laughs> no prospects of getting laid. <laughs> But she did go on one nice date through yeah, it. Yeah, you did. I did. Did he buy you a drink? Yes. And did you get some action? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me if I got roofie. No. <laughs> yeah, that's always <laughs> Dean's first question. What? <laughs> did you eat some nice food and did you get roofied? <laughs> I'm still here, so date. okay. Lovely. No, I haven't gotten to the all-important did you get roofied <laughs> part of the interview yet. But uh, so, so then you guys go on a date. Did you, did you make out with the guy? 
He walked me to my car and gave me a kiss. Okay, well, so with one swipe, you can almost. Did you get laid at all? No, no, because no, that's not what I was looking for. So were you looking just, for a good night kiss? What were you looking for? I was just looking to meet someone. Whatever. <laughs> so swipe me. is not like grinder because grinder is just oh, about. Dude, so. Yeah, it's just about. What the, is it? What is it? What is grinder? For, what, what, it's it? just about the tradesman's entrance. Just okay, go so, to the bathroom and let's really? do this. Yeah, like it's an instant one. Instant. Yep. And just you don't for know gay what dudes? they look like. So what happens? What do you no, do? You Same do, thing. You do on okay. grinder. Yeah. No, you don't. It's just basically Same thing? who's around you in vicinity. So it's on. It's like. Specifically like a, for gay guys. For gay guys. Girls like too an, or just or just dudes? I think it's just dudes. Okay. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, and you just, it's like you'll be at a bar mm-hmm. and you'll get like who's around you in vicinity, who's on Grindr. And you know what it's about. You'd be like, hey. So will you get, have you been with people, you've been with people that have used this app? Yes. Like you had a buddy that used it and he says, yes. hey, there's a guy in this building right now. I'm yeah. going to meet him in the can. He basically was like, I got to go. I'm literally like, in the can. Yeah, literally in the can. I said, where are you going? He's like, uh, bathroom grinder. Did he not say that's all he said he, was he said grinder? grinder? I'm like grinder. He's like, I'm meeting a dude in a bathroom. Did he not grinder. honestly say I'll see you in about six minutes? Hundred percent. Yeah. He said I'll see you in six. Did was he back? In six he minutes? was back in about seven. Guess it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed himself in the toilet. You never in forget the your thirtieth. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty active. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Did he go all the way? Of course. Wow. What's the point? Here or here? Right? Oh, yeah, no, just just the back. Here? Just oh, wow, side. here. What? Yeah, just the backside. Just met a guy, random, no cool. idea. Yeah, had no clue. That's how easy. And then there's this other one called Tinder that apparently Miss USA, and I was watching it this weekend, beautiful lady, Miss USA. Yeah. Uh, she's on Tinder. She's got like an online dating profile See, on there. It can't be that bad if no. she's on there. They hired her to be on it. Let's so, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. It can't be that bad if Miss USA. It's, yeah. It's not. It is. It's a terrible way to, it's a terrible way to pick up. It's, and you it's can't, it's, talk like, to it's like selling a relationship on Kijiji. That's exactly what, it's no. the Kijiji, yes it is. It's the Kijiji of relationships. It's for people who Nicole, are too you're, busy Nicole, you're a call screener. Out. Nicole, you're a call screener. <laughs> Yeah, you should be able so to pick mean. up some of the people that you screen. Yeah, this is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I don't know what they look like. You talk to about 8 million people a day on the phone. She wants to know what they look like. She's not yeah. looking for grinder. She's looking for swipe. I'm, yeah, I'm not looking to just like hook up and bang and whatever. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You say you're not, but you are. You She's wouldn't have downloaded the app if you didn't. What would happen if, if things progressed with that guy? That guy you went on the one swipe date with? I wouldn't have let it. <sighs> no way. Swipe or no swiping. <laughs> the, the, oh the man <laughs> No swiping the pooty <laughs> None of that This is not Europe It's crazy It's crazy this world Where you just get laid with your thumb Yeah It's awesome I mean it's It's absolutely dedicated Totally for losers <laughs> I want to know the first Like if you If you have these apps And yeah. use them all the time Like I'm, I'm going through The reviews of these apps Yeah <clears throat> This is this, this is what makes me laugh Oh my God, stay away from it. This is from Rain Gonzalez, some lady. It hijacked all my contact messages. So embarrassing. Please scroll to the bottom and flag this app as inappropriate. Here's another guy. This app gets access to your Facebook information. As soon as you agree, it'll contact all your contacts. I had to go into mega damage control for 30 minutes (laughs) because everybody was getting like an invite invite. to this app to come and hook up with this guy, even his parents. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> My mom's all over it. <laughs> she wanted to swipe me. <laughs> Don't get this app. It'll spam everybody. Don't install it. Send an invite to all my contacts. Spam, 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 spam. Spam, spam, spam. I like this app. I got laid twice this week. <laughs> <laughs> Good for that guy. Or girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, if you got laid using it, it gets five out of five stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are listening to the Dean Blundell Show. 102.1. The Edge. Hey, time for uh, we'll hop and Best Confession wins uh, today's prizes. What do we have? We got Edge Fest tickets and something else. And the Toronto Festival of Beer. Oh. Beer. Mm. You know what they do at that thing, which is cool, is they have uh, they, they they give you little samples. So you're you're not committed oh. to like a whole pint of something you don't like. They give you like little sample glasses that you can enjoy. Does that mean you just you just slowly get faced? You know, faced. Yeah. <laughs> I love that thing. <laughs> I love that thing. 
<laughs> yeah. And you can get you can get it on like 12 different kinds of beer. Yeah. But they're like it's like a Dixie cup. It's like a shot glass full of beer. And you get to taste all kinds of different beer too. You can get the amber pale ale. You can get the chocolate stout. Probably not great on a smoking hot day. <laughs> I've been to some of those those microbrewery shows before where they, they start putting like hot peppers and stuff in it. Mm-hmm. I think that's a little overboard. Yeah, me too. Ooh. That doesn't sound good. Hey, Victor. Yeah. How you doing? All right, how's it going? Good. What happened? Yeah. Hey, what happened? What the f- happened? Well, I have a problem. I can't work uh, construction because I always take crafts and public properties. I've also did one on the go bus. And I've also <laughs> on <laughs> You can't I say the S word. Yeah. You don't 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 say the S word. You can say poop though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, can't, I have no control of my poop. I even uh, took a poop on the Viva Blue. Why? They wouldn't let, they wouldn't let me, Why'd they wouldn't you poop on the Viva me. Blue, dude? You can't poop on the bus like that. There's no there's no toilet. That's my point exactly. Do you have yeah. IBS? I don't even know what that is. All I know is I just have some pooping problems. <laughs> <laughs> we wearing a diaper when you poop pooped on the no. blue? No. Do, do you pull? Well, yeah. Do you pull your pants down or just do it in your pants? Well, somebody pulled out a diaper on me when I was uh, pooing in front of their lawn. So. I don't Why know. can't you just do it in the toilet like everybody else? It just happens. No, it doesn't just happen. People hold it. it. The whole world can hold it. Yeah. You can hold it too, unless you're, you got IBS. Chris. Well, you don't want to hang up me for a day because you'll see what would happen. Uh, no kidding. For lots of reasons. Hey, Julie. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from? I'm you, calling you... from Milton. I'm on the 401. Oh, I thought you were calling from Helium Land. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. I sound like happened? I'm 13. Yeah, you do. You sound like Minnie Mouse. Yeah, I'm 20, believe it or not. <laughs> are you really? How, how tall are you? Three foot four? No, I'm five six. Oh, are you? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. happened? Hey, what, what happened? Uh, <laughs> this is uh, This is super embarrassing. I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. Um, I was just on vacation in Southeast Asia, um, and I guess the heat kind of messes with your uh, your muscle control, um, but I was hooking up with this very, uh, very hot English guy, um, and he says to me, he goes, I, I really don't want to embarrass you, but I think that you just peed on me. And I was like, um, no, no, I don't think I did. I, I think I just, um, a, something, a similar reaction, yes. but it's also wet. Um, and he was like, no, nope, I'm, I'm pretty sure you peed on me. And uh, yeah, so I was hooking up with probably the hottest guy in the world. And I urinated on him. <laughs> Why? Um, I think... I've heard that just the heat in, in Asia, uh, you, yeah, okay. your muscles just... <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff yeah. happens yeah. in Asia. Yeah. 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 Just loose. <laughs> just peed. Just peed. I believe you peed on me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you may have urinated on my leg. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Little tinkle there. Right? Deplorable. Hi, Linda. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? I'm all right. What happened? Hey, what happened? What the f- <laughs> this weekend, me and my boyfriend were hanging out. It was my birthday, and uh, we were just having a few drinks in my apartment. Are you from east of the city, perhaps? Yes, I'm from Port Hope. Hey! hey. <laughs> not quite Oshawa. <laughs> no, not quite. All right. <laughs> and uh, as we were sitting there, he ended up having a seizure, and it's a uh, mouth seizure, so it was really, really bad, and he actually went into cardiac arrest. Does he have epilepsy? Yes. Okay. Oh, and he had it as a child, so he has actually hasn't had like many seizures over the years, in about three, in about four years. And it was so bad his heart stopped. He went into cardiac arrest, and I got up from the end of the bed, ran up to him, and smoked him as hard as I could in the chest, and his heart started back right up. <laughs> this last weekend? <laughs> yeah, it was my birthday. Oh, you win! Wow. Congratulations! Yes. Wow! I saved his life on my birthday. Yeah, oh, you brought him back to life. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> was he? Da- scary, was he? Though. Yeah, it would have been cool though if you were trying to tell a story. Were you trying to tell a story at the time of his seizure? Oh God, it was horrible. I called nine one one and I couldn't even talk on the phone. <laughs> no, I mean like at the time that he started having the seizure. Were you talking? Oh yeah, we were talking, and all of a sudden he got it. 
<laughs> yeah, and he's like, I can't like, deal with it anymore. I, I need a seizure. And then she got mad at him and went over and punched him in the chest and magically Run started back. his heart again. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, I was just punching you. He, he was holding it. He actually had like a steak knife in his hand when he went into a seizure. So I actually had to get the knife out of his hand while he was seizing. Or yeah. he probably would have cut him to like, you know, right in the neck. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you laughing? <laughs> or he would have cut his juggler. <laughs> what a mess. You should have seen his face. <laughs> what? What? On his birthday. On my birthday. Yeah, well, either birthday. way, it said, was he? did he say thanks after or no? Oh, God, of course he did. <laughs> How did he say thanks? Well, at first he didn't know when he came to, he didn't even know who I was. So, because they, they don't know where they are, who they are, anything. How convenient. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> who are well, you? Thanks a lot. Yeah, what'd you do? <laughs> the Chorus Broadcasting System presents the Dean Blundell Show. It's going to be a super duper program for you. 102.1. The Edge. This is your Edge. Hold it. Files <laughs> with Dean Blundell right. on the edge. A uh, wedding reception ended in disaster when a family fought over a piece of chicken that included the bride's sister getting punched unconscious by her own <laughs> uncle. Hey, must have been some chicken. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Crystal Coleman, a 29-year-old, left with a broken nose, black eyes after her uncle Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he certainly was. Everybody's got that uncle Kurt, don't <laughs> they? <laughs> uncle Kurt did it. Uh, punched her right in the face at uh, her sister's wedding. The fight erupted when the best man pushed into the buffet queue to get some food for his kid, which is said to have upset the fat uncle of the bride. The 53-year-old truck driver then turned around, thought it was the girl, and oh. just unloaded. Oh. Boom, right in the face, broke her nose and everything. Well, that was it. Who does that? Big fight. The buffet tables got turned over. Uncle Kirk got <sighs> punched by one of the dads, and the kids started crying, and the woman's bleeding. Not good. The groom said the brawl started at the buffet table after his brother reached over to grab a piece of chicken for his 11-year-old. Kurt thought he was pushing in the queue and called him a fat C-word. Ooh. He went right for the C. Yeah. I, I would love to be in a wedding like that. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Especially just on the sidelines. Just a spectator. Do you, you ever go to a wedding? I think this stuff all the time. And yeah. I, You and I talked about this. You go to a wedding and you go, my God, I could just go right up there and punch the groom right in the face yes. right now and ruin everybody's day. <laughs> yes. Everyone would remember <laughs> yeah. this wedding. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever think about stuff like that? I do. Where I can pull the whole tablecloth off the table. Sometimes I think about slapping the DJ. Do you really? Yeah. Just yeah. walking up there. Bang. Yeah. yeah. Macarena this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Be a huge star on world star hip hop. Yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Because hey, everybody would remember it. Hey, remember when Blundell punched the groom in the balls? <laughs> I do. <laughs> man in Delaware was arrested this week after allegedly uh, throwing a, I'm just reading this, a glob of man stuff on a woman at Walmart because, quote, he thought she was pretty hot. Mm. One way to show your love. Well, you probably just should have said hi. The uh, Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah, he's Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the odd incident happened on Tuesday at a store. The 20-year-old woman said the man walked by her, and she suddenly felt something on, wet on her buttocks, thigh, oh. and leg. Oh, oh my God. Wow. At, at first, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he ate a lot of celery. That's oh, yeah. Impressive. At, <laughs> he's, only, he's only 20. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. At first, she thought it was spit, but I guessed it was uh, man stuff after taking a closer look. Uh, that's when she got help from one of the employees. They called 911, arrested 22-year-old Frank Short Jr. You know <laughs> seniors <laughs> upset, right? <laughs> seniors as pissed uh. as they come now. Maybe it's a family <laughs> tradition. You'd be like, it was Junior. <laughs> uh, arrested him for offensive touching with body fluid, harassment, lewdness, disorderly conduct. Uh, originally, he told officers he must have sneezed and accidentally flung a glob of snot on the woman. <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? Well, if that's snot, you've been doing something you shouldn't have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a good look. <laughs> that was a bad day for him. Oh, man. Very yeah. bad day. How did that get in your mouth then, sir? <laughs> Oh, man, you got me. Miranda gave it to her from the tap. Ugh. 
Finally, after being confronted with the results of the test, showed the substance was uh, man spirit. He admitted, yeah, I did that. What I would pretend to do is smack girls on the butt and then take that stuff in my hand and throw it at them. But uh, he only did it because, as he said to the officers, quote, he thought she was pretty hot and he wanted to get to know her. I thought that's how babies were made. <laughs> he wanted to cut the chase. He just yeah, did he ever. wanted to get in right in there. Yeah, you do. You know, yeah, once again, probably start with hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi, my name is. <laughs> Remember those ones? <laughs> Remember, yeah. I went, remember, hi, am I, it's my name. What's my, what's your name? Uh, and a news station in um, Los Angeles is in trouble, Asiana Airlines. Uh, they released, apparently, uh, I'll give you the background. This is the Coles notes. Apparently, the TV station called the NTSB, and they wanted to find out who the pilots were of that plane that crashed at San Francisco. And so the, the person on the other end apparently gave them some fake names which they said was a summer intern that worked at the NTSB. Yeah. You'd probably want to clear the names of someone who wasn't a summer intern. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the fascinating part about this isn't that the intern kind of made, you know, got the scoop on the TV station. It's that this went by the person that wrote it, the researcher, the editor, and all the news anchors, and it actually went on the air. And this is, like I said, I don't know that it's funny. Derek, you know, Andrew I think it's, think it's the best. Dang. Also on the plane crash, KTV has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We Tu Lo, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ow. Ah. The NTSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board flight 214 when it crashed. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing on Saturday. <laughs> names of the four pilots who were on board the flight, they are Captain... <laughs> Sum Ting Wong. <laughs> we Tu Lo. Ho Li Fook and Bang Ding Ow. <laughs> Not funny. <sighs> Those are your edge files. Show the hell day it is in, uh, oh yeah, the airline suing the TV station right. and everybody's getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Those are your edge files. Show the hell day it is in July of the year 2013. <laughs> The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. Edge. This is the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1. The Edge. Dean Blundell Show presents Ho. I get to pull out all that cocky. Renovation. Dark wood. That's good. <laughs> it's, still, it's still funny. I'm sorry. It's just still funny. <laughs> Uh, time for some whole renovations. Uh, I think we've got these tickets to go see Pearl Jam. And Adra was just saying, it, it's the last two pairs of tickets. Uh, Adra was just saying uh, that, that Eddie Vedder gave her a tambourine once. He did. Which I happen to think is a lie. It's not a lie. I think it's a lie from no, Liar Island. It's not <laughs> yeah. a lie. Several witnesses were there. There's video footage of it. You could probably YouTube it yeah, and find okay, it. Yeah, okay, you YouTube it. In Buffalo. You I was wearing an orange shirt. Oh, he picked you out of the crowd in Buffalo? He did. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be easy. Uh, <laughs> someone get me the skinny chick. It's good to be Canadian. Yeah, I was dancing out and he gave me the tambourine. Were you rocking? I was, yeah. I think to State of Love and Trust, probably. State of Love and Trust. That's still a great song. Such isn't a good it? tune, yeah. So, yeah, Eddie Vedder loves me. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. I'm sure he does. He does. Why? Because he does it. He, he's the same. Tambourine. It's he, it. No. <laughs> hey, Eddie, we're out of tambourines. <laughs> it's because I gave him to the skinny Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to give it to a fat American. You're crazy. <laughs> all right. Time for home renovations. You know how it works. We give you three clips. Of the three clips, you got to get all of them. If they're from a home renovation show, you say home. Dirty movie, you say ho. Uh, there's three clips. You got to get all three. We changed the rules because people were screwing it up, magically screwing it up too. <laughs> uh, Catherine. Oh. Hi, Dean. How are you? It's a lady. I'm good. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from? Um. Well, Branson now, but from Burlington, really. All right. Uh, you know how to play home renovations? Yes. You like Pearl Jam? Yes. Love Pearl Jam? Yes. Okay. We're going to give you three clips. Uh, home renovation show, you say home. Dirty movie, you say ho. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that last part. Yeah. 
Hey, that sounds like fun, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Beautiful time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Catherine? Uh, home. <laughs> That's right. Number two. Today, I'm going to show you how to remove old cock and put in a new line of beautiful, clean cock. Mm. <laughs> That's home. Because <laughs> if it wasn't, we'd be <laughs> totally fired. <laughs> Clip number three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my favorite though, and Adjo's eyes get big as saucers when she heard this. She's thinking that thing takes double D batteries. <laughs> the Deep Bundell Show. The Edge. Corey Monteith, sad story. Dude from Glee's Dead. Found in uh, his hotel room over the weekend. Uh, Canadian guy. Yeah. He's born in Calgary. Grew up, uh, his dad was a military dude. Had Apparently had a crappy relationship with him. I was just kind of doing some reading. Started doing drugs when he was 13. It's crazy. Alcohol and marijuana. Then he was, as it says, tear truant from school. <laughs> Seems like the <laughs> least elite. of his <laughs> yeah. And on that. top of it, he's truant. He's truant. <laughs> he's doing drugs, alcohol, he's, and he's been late. <laughs> and his phonics for, is terrible. He's been late for French twice. Truant. <laughs> uh, he attended 16 schools. 16. Wow. wow. Uh, by that time, his drug and alcohol dependency increased. Monteith turned to petty crimes, such as stealing money from friends, family to fund his addictions. Turning point came apparently, well, yesterday, but before that, uh, when his mother and a group of uh, friends staged an intervention. He was 19. Went to rehab. Uh, stated he's lucky to be alive on so many counts. He eventually received his high school diploma in 2011 from an alternative school he attended in his youth. Before breaking into show business, he worked various jobs, including a Walmart greeter, taxi cab driver, school bus driver, and a roofer. Hmm. Lots going on. This guy had the world by the nuts. Yeah. Good-looking dude, one of the biggest shows in television. Yeah. Um, in 2009, he was cast in Glee. Uh, portraying his character who is, if you don't watch the show, Finn Hudson, who's like the cool jock on the show that actually is part of the Glee Club as well, breaking the stereotypes and stuff like that. Um, and apparently got the job from singing REO Speedwagon's Can't Fight This Feeling in an audition. Mm. So he's a good singer. Sad stuff. Uh, leaves behind his girlfriend, Leah Michelle, who by all accounts was very bitchy. Yeah. You think? That's what I heard. Yeah. No, that's just what you hear. Yeah. Bitchy and phony, I hear. Oh, really? Yeah. Are we well, just jealous? Let's add sad to the mix, too. Yeah. She's got to be yeah. devastated yeah, today. True. true. Uh, terrible stuff. And, you know, that's funny because he, he's been in a bunch of movies as well. Like, he uh, did. He, he played himself on the uh, on the Simpsons, the Cleveland show, Kids' Choice Wars. He, on Master, he just finished shooting Master Chef by himself. Mm. Um. But in a telling interview he did, I think, is this with Strombolopoulos? Is that mm -hmm. who this with? Yeah. Uh, telling interview. And this is kind of an eerie interview. So listen to this. This is kind of, this is Corey Monteith. I don't know how long ago I was talking about drug addiction. What we'll oh, kind of made him clean? What we'll keeps him going? And it's weird uh, knowing that he's now dead, listening to this as he said it maybe two, three years ago to George. Have You're so unique in this position that fame often leads to the disintegration of a person. But it seems like in your case, it's having the opposite effect. Like you're, you're dealing with the dad stuff, dealing with this stuff. Hey, everybody, I'm not running from my past. I did some bad shit. Um, yeah. And it, like that, like is this, are you on this long personal journey? Do you feel like it's a personal journey? Yeah. I mean, I just try and do the next right thing, you know? I just try and do the next right thing. That's all I can say. Is, and it's when you, when you have this whole fame thing, is, it just seems like so many opportunities. I see it as so many opportunities, and there's, there are many opportunities to do the next wrong thing. Yeah, man, kids try drugs you know for lots saying? of reasons. Oh, lots, what were your reasons? Well, it's just finding, finding, um, finding a place, you know. It, for me, it wasn't so much about, you know, the substances per se. It was more about, about not fitting in. It was not having... Um, uh, I, I, I hadn't found myself at all. I had no idea who I was. I had no idea where I was going. I was trying to 
you know, and all of a sudden I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be this bad kid. And other kids are going to be like, oh, he's the bad kid. And so he's cool. And so they'll want to hang out with me. Mm. Weird, eh? Mm-hmm. Very weird. Totally weird. Sad, too. Mm-hmm. He's a fairly famous Canadian. Was he? Uh, well, yeah, you didn't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> I have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Drugs, kids, stay away. Here's your lesson. You can have it all, and that stuff just takes... Like, the, dr- drugs must be... You, you think about this guy, he's as good-looking as he is, as cool as he is, as, as rich as he is, as all the stuff he's got going for him, and yet still, as great as that might feel to have the world by the nutsack, yeah. drugs were more important to him. So you just keep that in mind. Don't start. It is now a proven fact. Facebook is a scourge on society. Facebook destroys relationships. Facebook makes people do terrible things to one another. Terrible, terrible things. The Dean Bundell Show is on Facebook. See what the guys are up to. Leave a comment. Listen to the podcast. Make new friends. Dispose of the old ones. Check us out on Facebook today. And please like us. All right, whatever. The Dean Bundell Show. 102.1 The Edge. Time for your phone calls. Oh, see now people are publishing photos of this uh, Corey Monteith guy drinking the days before he died. Mm. Was he not supposed to drink anymore? I guess not a rehab. I don't know. I don't know if drinking was his bag. Or his vice. Yeah. Was it? It was a drink? I don't think so. I think I think it was it was the, it I think was it was the coke. cocaine. Sad stuff. Are you really sad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's sad, dude. Yeah. Any, anytime that happens to anybody, but John. Hello, how's well, it going? Good man, what's up? Well, I was talking about a year ago. I was on my way to get snipped, and uh, I went and got snipped, and I've been living uh, a year now post-snipping, and I'm uh, loving it. I'm a vasectomy survivor, and uh, it's, uh, it's going all right. So I just thought I'd call in and uh, let you know that, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, you I still had to- a vasectomy. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I went and had it. It, it took... Uh, yeah, it was it was ironic. I had it in the hospital where I was born, and the, it's still on the same floor of the urology clinic. I got snipped right down the hallway from where I was born. Mm. And uh, while the procedure was going on through the wall, someone had the radio on in the office, I guess. So it was uh, I got snipped basically to uh, Led Zeppelin, nobody's fault but mine. That's awesome, dude. Mm. I've heard terrible stories of guys in their vasectomies. I know a dude... That is, he's had three years ago, still in pain daily. Really? Yeah. Can't jump up and down. Can't do any jumping jacks. When he gets kicked there, it hurts. But. Martin. Hey. What's up? Nothing much, man. My vasectomy was great. (laughs) I've never heard anybody say that. But I I had an awesome vasectomy. Derek just had his too. Yeah. That's not why I called. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Hey, any news on Sausage Fest? Yeah. And I have another question for you. Whatever happened to Insta Bunny? <laughs> that was good enough. Eh? Didn't you want the answer? Yeah. No, okay. Go ahead. What's your other question? Whatever happened to Angry Duncan? Yeah, he's just this listener, dude. He's a nice guy. He just kind of phones in. It's not real, so I've dumped it. Like, he kind of puts it on. It's a big joke. But yeah, Sausage Fest, to answer your question. Yes, there is news. <laughs> Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Kevin. How you doing, bud? Good. What's up? Oh, I uh, I went to the the Indy. You went to you the did. Indy? Did you win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you soup that did thing you up. Win? Did you <laughs> soup up your wheelchair and zip around the track? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, yeah. You good? Oh. Yeah. What's going on? Are you are you talking to us? Or are you talking to the nurses? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I just called him because I was, um, I didn't call him for a while. <laughs> well, usually when you call, you call in for a reason, not just because you I haven't was, called for a while. I was in the, the hospital for a while. Why? What happened? I just had a, a lung infection. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Boy. Did you, did you clear that up? Yeah, I'm good now, yeah. All right. Be weird to hear you cough a lot. Bacon? Nothing. Nothing. 
I didn't hear you. Fred. Is, is, okay. is there anything that I could do for you today? Is there something wrong? Is there, can I help with something? Um, well, I just want to talk about... I was at the... At the racing. About the operation? No. How about the Indy? The race. Oh, about the oh, race. The race. Okay. That was there and that. How it sounded the cars make? Like, around. <laughs> <laughs> Do, okay, do like do three cars going by really fast. Uh, okay. Um. Is that the fourth one? <laughs> what was that one? The last one farted. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make it around the loop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. It's done. I met uh, some girls there. Oh, you did, did you? What kind like, of girls? Um, like models. Yeah, oh, really? how'd that go? Oh. Yeah, from the. Uh, you ever heard of that place? The Tilts and Kilt? Yeah, they're not models, dude. They're waitresses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I got my uh, my picture with them. Mm hmm. Well, that's exciting. Good yeah. for you. Um, I got a calendar. Yep. Huh. It was real nice, man. Yeah, because the chicks are wearing almost nothing. <laughs> oh, not really, but. Yes, really. I mean. Almost the, nothing. Yeah, almost. Like, they're very little. They wear very little in the calendar. So, um, I was wondering, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be cool. Uh, what? What? Oh, wait. The, what's that called? The, that concert, uh, huh. at the end of the month. Edgefest? Uh, yeah, Edgefest. Oh, I know what you're doing. Yeah, that'd be cool, eh? Right? Yeah, you're trying to get tickets for it, aren't oh, you? I didn't say it. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Cool. Dude, admit it. Just admit it. You, no one calls to say, hey, that would be nice to go to the show and then not say anything. That's like passive aggressive. Yeah, I totally. Uh, well, uh, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're just making noise. What are you say? Yeah, you're just making noises. What do you say? Yeah, you're just making noises. What's going on? What do you want? Yeah, about the, the Edge Fest. What about the Edge Fest? Can I go or not? You can go to anything you want. Yeah. So, uh, There's some beeping going on back there. You can hook me up. Someone, yeah. Someone's maybe stepping on a tube. Of oh, his uh, he's reversing. Yeah. That's <laughs> down the hall. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Some some loser down the hall, eh, bud? Yeah. <laughs> his chair. Yeah. Some other guy's chair down the hall. Oh, so, um. Where's Todd? Vacation. Oh, where? I don't know. Hawaii oh, again? I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I don't know. Is that's the third time? I still won't know after the third <laughs> okay. third time that you ask. I still won't know. Oh, so, um, you know what? Um, why do you guys do the traffic so much? Because a lot of people use it. Because people yeah. are driving to work. It's or kind of annoying now. Well, the traffic Kevin, is annoying. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, listen to me. Listen to me. Every 15 minutes. Because you never drive anywhere unless it's to the bathroom. Like, if, oh. do, do you want us to do? Do you want us to do reports like traffic reports in your in your in your home there? Once an hour. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's someone dropped a candy wrapper in front of the kitchen. Kevin, be careful. Marvel. In your wheelchair. I don't care about that. But. Well, d d there's other people other than you out there, Kev. But maybe once. Uh, no. No, Kevin. 45 minutes. No. No. Why? I don't know. Back to the indie sounds he again. <laughs> Tell us that the traffic's too much. It's every 15. Do it once every 45. And give me some Edge Fest tickets. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm on. I don't know. If I'm nice for... I don't know, dude. Well, I'm just curious. Sir. Well, it's just it's hard to get around there. Yeah. Well, I bet you could, though. What? What? <laughs> huh? yeah, Derek, now you're using reverse psychology. <laughs> totally I, bet, I bet you could give me those tickets. <laughs> I bet you could. I bet you could just hey, hand them to me if you wanted. What? Hey, Derek. Hey, Kev. You know what I like about... About... About you? What's that? Uncle Derek. Thanks. He's, yeah. I'm not doing it for you. No. It <laughs> talks to me like... And the voice, like... In the, why don't you do it? Yeah, Kev. you do it. You do yeah, Uncle Yeah, you Kev. do Uncle Kev. Do Uncle, Uncle Kev. Uncle Kev. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> How are you doing? 
I'm doing fine. Well, how's how's life treating you there, buddy? Yeah. How the how the girls? Oh, they're a a bunch of whores. <laughs> you like that or not? <laughs> nice. Derek I loved it. it. Derek loved it. That was the <laughs> best. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> wow. You are something, man. You should be a ventriloquist or something. Oh, yeah, I should. Yeah. Do you want just, me to do that? You just... <laughs> Another one? Or? No. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta know it. Who do you want to hear? Um... What do you mean? Who do you want to hear? <laughs> like, do, 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 do you want to do another impression? Yeah, another impression. Okay. Um, it's a tough one. What about like Pacino? El Pacino. Yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty hard. Try it. Huh? Because your first one sounded nothing like you. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you try uh, Al Pacino? Hey, um, you ready? Try uh, uh, Dirty uh, Harry. Like very hairy? Yeah, like go ahead and make my day. Just like he okay. said. Yeah, okay, ready? Here we go. Go ahead. Make my day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. That was good, Cap. That was. Yeah. Hey, yo, what, you guys? Huh. You guys are cool. Thanks, man. Mm. Hang on, please. Oh, yep. Oh. There's other people calling, too. Wow. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hello. What's up? Uh, you know, just wanted to talk about vasectomies for a moment. Sure. Mine was wonderful. No one says that. No one I, says it, it was. It was You great. enjoyed it? it? You, you enjoyed it, having a vasectomy? Well, I thought it would be a bit rough, but even when the fella washed him up at the end of it, it didn't really bother me. Really? Yeah. So uh, you got a wash, too? I didn't get yeah, a wash. Wow. I soaked him up at the end and cleaned him up. It was, they were sparkling. I got home. Beautiful. Damn two tiered <laughs> medical system. <laughs> I got home and I got to, you know, sit on the couch with a bag of peas. Even got the remote control for the night. Yep. Uh, best day yet. That was the best day you've ever had, huh? Oh, no, not quite. <laughs> when it was over, the whole staff in the upper room started slow clapping. <laughs> uh, that was the best the wife... day I ever had. I got no expectations at all. The wife tried to bribe the doctor to uh, throw in a circumcision, but that didn't pan out. Oh, did she really? Yeah. You, you're not circumcised? No. Girls don't like that, do they? Uh, well, I haven't met no. too many that didn't. Yeah, you don't? You, no. have, you, have you seen it? <clears throat> I've seen it, never. Will you? Never if been if with you it. see it, no. will you know? Will you, you ever seen that one that's breaker? grown out of it? Is it a. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen he wants to, Derek wants no. to show his wiener. <laughs> no, I, I don't see have it. You ever, have I know you a ever, guy. Have you ever been to the point where it's like go time and you're like, no chance? That thing is not for me. I usually try to feel it first, find out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You give it a quick test? <laughs> yeah, I got to make sure what you're working with. <laughs> but make you, sure what you're working but with. But it's a deal breaker. Yeah, a little bit. You won't. A little bit. A little bit of a deal breaker. Really? Yeah, just, yeah. See, Derek, I told you. You don't believe me. Snip it. Jeez. You, you know. Two, you too? No dice? Yeah. Yeah, see? Uh, just, Nicole, too. She won't. Yeah, it doesn't look right. Yeah. Doesn't look right, doesn't feel right, just. I could probably sell you on the idea. <laughs> could you, yeah. Derek? <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> you could be the one. I could change those me. spots. <laughs> John. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? Awesome show you guys go going on. I've heard about your circumcision story saying the sex to me, and I got a joke for you guys. Sure. Why do all Jewish men uh, Why are all Jewish men circumcised? Uh oh. That's a nice little racist cap. Yeah, well, uh, great. <laughs> 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 Thanks, man. <laughs> One of the things you've learned is Kev. Yeah. You there, Kev? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> you're back again, huh? Yeah, you're back again. <laughs> oh, um. You thought of a good invitation? You guys uh, hook me up or. I don't know. Well, I can't, uh, can't be that hard to arrange. Now, I'll bring, um. 
Your nurses aren't okay. that hot. It, it's not, no. Yeah, that's like not, when that's you, not that when you, when you pimp your nurses out yeah. for us to look at, <laughs> it's really not that big of a well, draw I'm, for me to be able to help you out. Uh, like if you said, I'll bring Margarita, the answer is still no, Have because a, she's not great to look at. Yeah. The rest of them. No, not even not her. A, not that hot. <laughs> no. Well, they're not bad, I think. No, not great. I think they're nice. Yeah, of course you do, dude. <laughs> it's because you're trying to whore them out to us. <laughs> he is, out he's his a, he says, you give me those tickets, I'll bring you <laughs> my two nurses that will wash me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He's the hospital pimp. I don't know, oh, man. man. Yeah, they all wash me. Yeah? That's what they're from you, yeah. Yeah, they wash my... Uh, we know. Okay, good. Yeah. That's uh, nice. Do you like it sometimes when they wash you down there? Uh... It depends what. Do you ever get wood? What it looks like. I don't think it does. Yeah. I don't think it matters what they look like. Well, they look good. No, I think yeah, you I'm get wood. I bet you you get excited for that wash, and it doesn't matter. If they're good looking. No, it did. Kevin. If they're good looking. No. Yeah. Well, no. you. You like Mercer? <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm oh, saying, I, if anybody touches that thing, you're probably pretty excited. That they don't have to be that good looking. Well, yeah. See, yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Truth comes out. It depends. No, oh, it doesn't. It depends. It doesn't well, depend at all. That's a funny word. Huh? What else do you want to know? Nothing. I gotta go. Oh, well, I'll take it. I, I oh. said I don't know. I'm not relentless. sure. I have to think about it. It's a relentless. That's very. No, I'm not asking Derek. What am I, what's Derek going to tell what can me? He do for you? What's Derek going to tell me that I can't tell you? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you can email me. No, <clears throat> no one's emailing you anything. I'll think about it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, I got. No you got to go through the same process like everybody, everybody else, else, dude. Yeah. I'm treating you like I treat every other person that calls well, I'm, in. I'm special. What? He's special. 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 Everyone's special in their own way. And, uh, no, everybody's special. Yeah. I can't treat you any different. You know what I've learned doing this job? I can't treat a guy in a wheelchair any different than I treat a guy in a pair of really nice running shoes. All no right. different. So I can't just give it. you stuff because you're in a wheelchair. That's discriminatory think against people it. that aren't. Keep, keep saying, well, think well you about think it. about it then. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it to him. He's persistent. I'm not. No. It's persistent. Oh, you mean, you know, you got to give him some credit. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you oh, got to give him tickets. I'm not giving him anything. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Kevin. I tried. Oh, yeah, you tried, yeah. <laughs> so I had luck. Yeah. Oh, here we Kev, go. Kev, this uh, is for, up? this is, this. Yeah. no, this isn't a dinner <laughs> no, party. No. <laughs> it's a radio show, Kev. <laughs> hey, how are you guys? Uh, I'm good. Well, yeah, you're good, yeah. Oh, yes, I'm Are you hot, sir? I'm, really? I'm okay. She's yeah. hot. Like what? Well, from uh, uh, one to ten. <laughs> like a nine. What um, is, is going this on? Happening? You know what? You know what, Kevin? Your scale, in on my scale, and your on your scale, she's a ten. Nine and a half, ten. No, on your scale, she's a ten. Oh yeah. Yeah. On your scale, Derek's a ten. <laughs> See, I'm right. Oh. Okay. I don't like guys, though. Yeah, well. I'm not into guys. Yeah. All right. I like girls, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can we okay. go now? Oh, I have... Okay, keep me in touch. <laughs> well, keep in touch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Keep me in touch. <laughs> he is. He's relentless. He no, won't quit. He Dean Blundell Show, 102.1 The Edge.